Hello, Saints, and welcome to our 50th episode of Church Chat with Sister Chuba. This song has been in my spirit, your grace and mercy. So sing along with Sister Chuba if you know the words, okay? Here we go. Your grace and mercy. So the church chat with Sister Jumba. I hope everybody out there is feeling blessed. So today, my friend Ty and I, we went to three church services, but I, like I told y'all, I'm going to start recapping only on two. I don't want my recast to be too long, but I want y'all to get a blessing at the same time. You know what I mean? Anyway, so the first church we went to was Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, where the pastor is the Reverend Dr. Raphael Warnock. Okay? And but he did not preach. There it was Women's Day there, so they had a guest preacher named Reverend Courtney Clayton Jenkins. And honey, she brought it home. Yes, she did. You know, so the songs they sang were uh I surrender all. That was beautiful because they had the, the choir singer with the praise dancers was doing their thing and they was all out and everything. Y'all know, honey, they was doing it. And then that was I surrender all. I surrender all. Y'all know that song. Ooh, Lord. They tore that up. And then they had Cece Wines came up in there. They got Cece Wines to sing. And she sang Alabaster Box. That's right. So that was wonderful. And then they say, oh, at the end, mm, at the end of the sermon, they did a wonderful change has come over me. That's so, ooh, that song touches me. I tell y'all. So the theme of, I guess, their Women's Day is um, uh, staying at the feet of Jesus. And what is it? And seek, oh, seek, surrender, and shift. So, you know, if you go to a Baptist church, you know, when they have Women's Day, honey, there is always a theme. There's always a theme. So, that was the theme. So anyway, the scripture she did was a Matthew 15, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Then she used the New Living Translation. And, um, what is it? She focused on verse 25. That seemed to be important to her. Uh, the sermon topic she did was cries, crises. Crumbs and a cure. Cries, crises, crumbs and a cure, honey. So she started telling a story about uh, her sister. She told a story about how her sister, Lindsay, back in 1993, at the age of 15, was diagnosed with lupus. So, and she at that time was only 10. So she, you know, she was a little girl. And so she said she spent um, weekends at, um, after she was diagnosed with lupus, she ended up spending her weekends at a children's hospital tied to an IV. Lord, so she used to hang out and all that stuff so she didn't get to do that anymore. She said around that time, she witnessed her mother in the bedroom kneeling by her bed. Now, this is the pre Pat, preacher talking this. And by her bed with hands clasped together and tears was falling over her thumbs. I said, what? I ain't never heard nobody say that. That means she was like, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. And the tears was coming over her thumbs. I said, okay, that was a deep prayer. She was in deep prayer, she said. She said, so she went, She was about to go and walk over there to her mother and ask her, Mommy, what's uh, some, some silly question or something? And she said, her father said to her, don't you dare disturb your mama. Don't you dare disturb your mama. And she was like, well, why? She asked, what's mama doing? And he said, she's praying over your sister's health and you did not disturb her. So she kept that image, she said, of her mother in crisis all these years with her. You know, she said, even when she had her own child. So she set 
She said her mama is the one who set the standard as a woman who we who how we survive crises. Okay. Then she told a story about her son and his speech development issue, which was brought to her attention when he was in pre-K. She ended up having to switch his schools, and he was doing great now in kindergarten and everything. And then the pandemic hit, and she had to teach him at home, but she couldn't give him what she he needed, and, and so she had to she put him in another school. So, and she said her child was not good with change because of this 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 thing he was going through. So she said now she put him into another school since after the pandemic declined, and now she drives. She said her and her husband drive. 840 miles a week to have her school, her son in this school. Lord Jesus, that's a lot of driving in one week. 840 miles just to take them to a school in a time of crisis. Mm -mm -mm. So she, that, that, that's her, her title, Cries, Crises, Crumbs, and a Cure. Come on now. So that is why she res re resonates with the woman in the text. The woman in that text. Um, she, um, that woman, uh, whose daughter was possessed by a demon and she fell at the Jesus feet and stuff. And she was in crisis and she was praying and everything and begging for help, you know, because she was a woman in crisis. And in order for her, that's Matthew 15, right? And in order for children to heal, women must rise up in a time of crisis. Come on, women. Come on. We got to rise up. We got to get up. Y'all see this post I got? That woman prayed. She's sleeping with her Bible. That stays up on Sister Jubo wall. She praying with that. Honey. Yes. Uh -huh. Everybody got a Bible. Look at even this picture. I got the babies with the Bibles. I always got big pictures with babies and Bibles. I, I don't play. Anyway. So she said, the Lord. She said, Lord, have mercy on me. For my child is possessed. She asked the Lord to have mercy on her for her possessed child. You know, we like, what? So she said the mother is asking for mercy and deliverance for the child. She is at the feet of Jesus Christ. Then she comes to, then comes these messy disciples who mess with her and stuff and telling the Lord she's this type of person, that person and whatever. And she said, ain't it nothing? She said, like church folks who want to insert themselves in your conversation with God. You know, so th th them disciples supposed to be the church people. You know, you come into church and want to sit in your pew and everything, she said. Mm, mm, mm. And people bother you. She said, um, it's nothing like here. here's a woman who comes to church. She's saying this. You come to church in a time of crisis and want to sit on your pew quietly and seek the Lord in prayer. When another church member looks down the road and he... he and row at, at you, at you, and has something messy to say. Like, mm, she ain't nothing. What's she doing here? You know, you know that stuff they be doing and whatever. She said, but don't let those church folks hinder your prayer life with God. They acting like you're bothering them. And you ain't bothering them. You minding your business. But they want to talk about you had a child out of wedlock. Or they want to talk about you got busted stealing. You know, or whatever it is you did. She, she, <laughs> Girl, please, you know how they are. If you go to church, you know. She said, so you give, she said, don't don't let them but bother you. Don't let them get to you because you are giving your power away when you let someone stop you from coming to Jesus. Yes, a lot. She said, uh, someone is sitting home being grateful right now. She said, I won't say it, but they sitting home grateful right now for this virtual church. Hello. You know why? Because they don't have to be worried about someone else's opinion about them making their way to Jesus. Come on now. Don't y'all know it? That's what people, a lot of people don't go to church because they say, you church people this, you church people that, you know? And then we give us a bad word. We're supposed to be welcoming people. That's what we're supposed to do. Anyway, so um, they don't have to worry about the judgment of church folks. Hello. Uh, too many of us know how to play church better than we know how to worship. Ooh, then she step on somebody's toe right there. You know how to go to church and act like you were saying stuff, but when it comes and you see somebody on the street need a handout or help, where you at? Where you at? Where's your compassion? Where's all that? Where's your grace and mercy? Where is it? Come on. She says, so her mother prayed for her sister with lupus for about three years, she said, from age 15 to 18. She said at her sister's last appointment before going away to college in Ohio, the doctor gave her all the protocols she was to follow for the treatment. 
there. Her sister told, looked at the doctor and told the doctor, she's not doing it anymore. He's like, but, uh, you know, we, we don't, uh, I know your mom's been praying, but, uh, we haven't seen any change, you know? So y'all haven't seen no change. Y'all giving me this treatment and stuff. And she like, she said, well, and she said, I refuse to allow my childhood to continue to be robbed by further, further with sickness. So her sister said, forget it. Not the mama. She never said how her mama felt about that. But I was like, all right now. She said, I will not spend my college years going to the hospital. Nothing has changed and enough is enough. Mm, enough is enough. And she said, because I skipped through a lot of that story, but she said, till this day, her sister has never stepped foot into a hospital except to give birth to her child hallelujah her sister is 45 now she said i think to this day her sister is a walking miracle she has not taken any medication for her lupus and the doctors do not understand it that's god that's god y'all they don't understand it she is now 45 years old right she said you see my mother got a prayer life and my sister got her blessing and that's that chapter in there, that, that that verse that she was talking about in Matthew. And then she said, one of the last things she said was, when you strengthen your prayer life, blessings and healings come. When you strengthen your worship life, blessings and healings come. And a change in yourself goes to change in everybody connected to you. Hallelujah. That was great. So that's when the choir sang, a change, oh, a change, oh, Lord, I can't even start singing that, because, oh, what a wonderful change has come over me, oh, Lord, I can't, they're going to make me cry, let me go on to the next church, so the next church we visited, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, was, um, Greater Allen and me, Cathedral of, Cathedral of New York, in Jamaica, Queens, New York. And the pastor there was Reverend Elaine M. Flake. And you know Reverend Elaine be preaching her behind her. And she was thanking God. She was saying how good it was to see people in the balcony. You know, people starting to come back. They just opened up one or two weeks ago, you know. So everybody's happening. Sister Jumbo going to church. Yes, she is. I'm going to go to be in my church soon as well. Honey, I'm going to check it out. I ain't trying to go to step there every week, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go with you. I'm going, I'm going today, today. Anyway, uh, what else? So, song they sing is forever. Uh, that by J.J. Harrison, Harrison, and then He Can Do It by Norman Hutchins. And then they had a sax solo. It is well, he was good with that sax solo. And uh, what else? It is well, and Say Yes. And then at the end, they did the song I just sang, Your Grace and Mercy. So the scripture was John chapter 8, verses 2 through 11, and she used the NIV Bible. And the sermon topic was Mercy Matters. Hallelujah. So one of her daily prayers is, Lord, have mercy. You know we all say that one, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> I say that a lot, Lord, have mercy. And she said, um, because she says mercy suits her case, and she knows those words get God's attention. When she asks for mercy, she is confessing there is some work that needs to be done in her and for her. She says, she says, Lord have mercy when she sees unfair sentences on TV. And, and when all of these voter suppression attempts, you know, she's like, Lord have mercy when she see that too. And Lord have mercy when she see mean spiritness, spiritness and deception. So she went on naming a lot of things where she's like, Lord have mercy, because you know a lot of stuff be going on. Anyway, so what else? She said, um, uh, spirit and deception. She doesn't know how to fix these things, but she knows the Lord does. That's why you call on him, ain't it? That's why you call on him. And so Lord have mercy can be translated to Lord fix it or Lord fix me. You know, mercy is the result of God's love for us. We should acknowledge the undeserved kindness of others. 
You should have been fine. You know when people are kind to you and do things for you and you think like you just deserve it. But no, that was God's mercy, honey. That was God's mercy. She said, you should have been fired, but the boss gave you another chance, you know? Or you deserve that speeding ticket, but the officer let you go with a warning. Mm. You could not pay for that meal, but you ate anyway, you know? So those are kindness, that mercy, that's things that was bestowed upon you. So we have all experienced mercy in our lives. We can never be too arrogant. Come on now, talk to those people to or feel so entitled okay that you cannot stop and say thank you for the mercies you have experienced from others i know i'm always thinking people that's it i thank you uh what is it i'm missing something i got a star here now the church we have to she said now church we have to be um we have to be those who experience mercy but we also have to be those who show mercy. Come on now. Especially when you want to grow spiritually. How you want to grow and you don't give no mercy to nobody but you expect mercy? Don't get little sister June Bug neck going. Come on now. Don't get me started on you. She said, we pray to God or others to show us mercy, but we are not always willing to show the mercy you want for others. Come on. You better preach, Reverend Lane. Reverend Flake preached, preaches about the woman who was caught in the act of adultery and how the people wanted to stone her to death, but not the uh, not the man she was caught with. You know, you know what I mean? It takes two to tangle now. It takes two, she said. Say, it takes two. And she said, and then they had mercy on one of the sinners and not both. Uh, come on. So, these men we're practicing selective condemnation. I ain't never heard that, but that sounds good. Selective condemnation. They were using her in a way to take Jesus down, she said. Uh, they were uh, using the law for their own purposes. Jesus wanted to show the woman mercy. He wanted her to live. So when they asked Jesus, what say he? Mm. Jesus said, and y'all all have heard this verse. If anyone... Is without sin, okay? If anyone of you is so perfect, let him cast the first stone. Want to see you throw something? Cause ain't none of us perfect. Come on now, come on now. Jesus Christ said it. he let it. He let him have it, and all the men walked away. Cause ain't none of them was perfect, and they knew. So then, um, uh, what else? So the message of this text is that we have to ensure that we do not become those who are unkind and those who refuse to show mercy to others because we are out of touch with our own truths. See, when you're out of touch with your own truth, you don't know how to do, how to treat people anyway. Think it's all about you. Mm. Anyway, aren't you glad when folks plot your um? When folks plot your demise and Jesus steps in because no weapons formed against you shall prosper. Mm. We need to thank God for the times that he stepped in and changed the course of events in a situation that could have been our destruction. Girl, she was preaching. Ooh, church, we need to work to extend our circle of compassion. Extend it. Extend it out in which we'd like to be shown. The compassion you want to be shown, you got to extend it too, saints. Come on. She said, go to Luke 6 about and read about showing mercy. And then she said, God's mercy has mattered when I needed it the most. God has been good to me. Lord, have mercy. Fix me, Lord, in my broken places. If you see anything in me that shouldn't, she was asking everybody to repeat this. I'm sorry. If you see anything in me that should shouldn't be take it out lord take it out change my thoughts change my attitude because i need your mercy lord mm, mm, mm. and that's when they sing your grace and mercy and that song was in my spirit so hallelujah saints i hope you enjoyed this episode of church chat with sister Jumba. and if you have not subscribed to my channel as of yet please come on and subscribe now Subscribe to Sister June Mug's channel and help her channel grow and help her spread the word. Share, like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to Sister June Mug's channel. 
and help us spread the word. God bless.